Hey everyone, Boxspring here. So I'm making a medieval fantasy sandbox um, and the initial focus will be on building up your own tiny little army um, with a core gameplay loop around fighting goblins, collecting loot, and then building up your uh, mercenary army uh, like this. Um, and then expanding from there to be able to like build your own house, your own base, um, be able to run any business like a blacksmith or a tavern and be able to do farming um, and then uh, lead your army to take over other kingdoms and kind of um, really a fantasy medieval sandbox like for you to do anything you want in. Um, so as you can see, we now have villagers uh, with AI that is working. So the villagers can now follow the player around um, and you can lead them to uh, take out these goblins together and they really help. They make it much easier to uh, fight, especially large numbers of goblins. Uh, whereas previously it can get often get quite overwhelming for the player. Um, so I think first I'll talk a little bit about some of the main updates from the past few days or so. I'm currently traveling, so that's why uh, the updates have been slower. Um, but the first thing I wanted to share was just um, some of the pixel artwork that I've been working on. Um, a lot of people have been asking me about uh, the art in this game. Uh, I didn't make these assets. I primarily used assets made by an incredible pixel artist named PETA. Uh, I found the asset pack in uh, on itch.io. I'll leave a link in the description for this. Uh, but PETA made uh, like the hero character here. Uh, as well as most of what you see here, like the trees, the the houses, you know, even the cave tiles underground. Um, I've loved the artwork so much that I've been trying to avoid <laughs> making my own artwork as much as possible uh, and really building my game around the existing arts assets. Uh, but now I've gotten to a point where um, the asset pack that I'm using um, doesn't have all of the resources that I need. Uh, namely, because my game, even early on, is going to be quite heavy on AI and on uh, NPCs, uh, characters. Uh, so that's something I'm starting to uh, look into expanding the assets that I'm using. So one of the assets I found was made by uh, Snoblin, which is also on itch.io. Uh, and he made these really great looking villagers. Um, let's see. Yeah, so villagers like this, and there's a whole pack of them. There's like blacksmith, there's a tavern keeper, I believe. Um, so I, I really like these. I think they match PETA's art fairly well. Um, and it's just like fantastic pixel art, really. Um, one thing the villager asset pack didn't have was attack animations. And I believe Snoblin is working on this right now, and he's going to add them uh, and release them in the future. Uh, but for now, I, I wanted to kind of get into some pixel art myself. So I've actually made some attack animations for the villagers um, for my game. So um, uh, the first thing I did was to make a sword attack. Um, and I used uh, the skeleton attack animations that Snoblin also made as a reference and basically adapted these animations for the villager. Uh, and I think they turn out pretty uh, good. Um, so I'll show how that looks here. I'm just using uh, Asprite to make my pixel art. Uh, so I moved the sword over. Uh, I've started to learn about some of these pixel art techniques around like smearing and overshooting, um, these kind of pixel art animation techniques. And I think this works pretty well. Um, I was studying PETA's pixel art and one thing I just is just blows my mind uh, how sophisticated his art is. Uh, like when you zoom in, it's like an impressionist painting, like the pixels themselves zoomed in, you know, are really complex and I don't quite understand how they work so well. And then when you zoom out and you play the animation, it just all comes together. Um, but you can see here, Peter uses the smearing techniques, really exaggerating the motion of that sword attack with the arm being smeared, the sword being smeared across. I think even the hair is having some of that. So I try to emulate a little bit of that in my own pixel art as well. So in addition to making the sword attack, I've also made a punch attack for the villager. So the idea is that if the villager is just a, you know, wandering on the, around the village, they're not gonna be holding a sword with them. And so 
the punch attack gives them a way to defend themselves even without a weapon. And then later on, when we have an inventory system and we have items, you can give villagers, you know, weapons, and then they will become armed and then can use a more powerful, longer range attack, like using a sword. Um, but with a punch attack, um, I've applied some of these techniques. So. Uh, like you can see here with the hand here, there's a bit of smearing on the arm. Um, and then, um, you know, it doesn't quite make sense when you just look at one frame, but when you chain it together, it seems to work. And especially if you look at the um, smaller version, like the more zoomed out version, it does kind of look like a punch. <laughs> so I, I'm quite happy with the results from that. Um, so back to the updates with the game, um, the villager follow behavior has now been implemented. Um, I'm not perfectly happy with it, and I'll talk about why briefly, uh, but that's kind of the roadmap at the moment. So we're going to add these mercenaries that the player can hire with the coins they're collecting from fighting goblins and letting the player build up a little army. Uh, right now, there's no way to actually heal your army, so food is going to be the next main update. Uh, but even with the villager behavior, there's going to be already kind of a core gameplay loop. It's going to feel more like a roguelike because you don't have a way to heal and you only have one life. Uh, but there is this core gameplay loop where, you know, you're fighting these goblins, um, you're collecting loot, you're building up your army, and then it makes you even more powerful so you can collect more loot and fight more goblins. Um, so right now, the uh, follow behavior of the villagers is fairly simplistic. Um, they start to follow the player if the player begins to get out of a follow range. Um, and then so they just basically seek out the player and once they get close enough to the player then they stop following and they start wandering around again. That's pretty simple. Um, but I don't like this completely because as you can see like the villagers are not moving with the player. Um, it kind of feels like the player needs to drag them along with them. Uh, it doesn't quite feel like it's a cohesive you know, army battalion where everyone's moving together. Uh, so I think what I'm going to do in the future is actually separate this um, current behavior, which I'm going to call like a seek behavior, uh, with the follow behavior where the villagers will actually move with the player. It will see the player's uh, direction of movement and go in that direction rather than go towards the player uh, itself. Um, and then the next big update will also be food. Um, so in the meantime, I might just make the villagers uh, heal passively because as you can see, they actually die fairly quickly. You'll lose your army after a few battles and then you have to rebuild your army from scratch again. So they'll need a way to heal. Um, so uh, in the longer term, we're gonna add food. At first, they're just gonna be apples that drop out of these trees. Uh, and then more and more, we're gonna add, uh, like uh, beyond foraging, we're gonna add farming so you can actually grow your own food and supply your army that way. So that's been the latest updates, still a work in progress, uh, but I would love to get your feedback and you know, definitely let me know what you think.